dear students today we are going to discuss about intensity distribution due to single slit diffraction so this was the slit of certain bits say a you have already learned in the previous video that the path difference was calculated in this manner suppose this was the point p on the screen and these are the two rays from the two edges of the slit and the path difference was this much and how did we calculate it by drawing a perpendicular then we found that a sin theta from this angle yeah from this triangle a sin theta was the path difference and we also said that a sin theta should be equal to n lambda for minima if you recall we have mentioned that the central portion is always bright because a constructive interference is taking place in this region therefore this a sin theta is equal to n lambda basically implies that n can be given all possible values from plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 but not 0 in case of interference we do give value n equal to 0 we start from n equal to 0 but in case of diffraction we start the giving values to n from 1 2 3 and so on this is because n is equal to 0 is already defined the central portion is a maxima it is a central bright maxima therefore one more difference between interference and diffraction is that the central fringe in case of interference can be bright or dark it depends but in case of diffraction the central fringe is always bright now if you recall young's double slit experiment and if you recall what we had done in it analytically we had also found the resultant amplitude the resultant intensity and if you recall those formulas it was like this <coughs> that resultant was equal to resultant a square plus b square plus 2 ab cos phi where a and b was the amplitude of the two waves coming from two slits and phi was the phase difference between them and r was the resultant amplitude amplitude of the resultant wave right similarly we would like to know what is the intensity distribution due to diffraction at a single slit right so for that case we proceed as this by the way there is one more point that i want to clear for the students who are basically beginners in learning this diffraction and interference see whenever the light bends at the corners or at the edges that process of bending is diffraction what happens onwards is interference because light superimposes light waves superimpose on each other and they produce certain resultant that process is called interference but what happens at the corners or the edges is diffraction diffraction is bending of light but what happens ahead is interference so you should not confuse yourself with diffraction and interference all for all patterns that we get on the screen are because of interference but whenever the bending happens this is actually diffraction right bending alone is diffraction what happens subsequent to it is uh, this interference right and also remember that these plus values are for the upper part of the screen and these minus values are for the lower part of the screen and n equal to 0 is already defined that it is the central bright maxima now today we intend to find what is the resultant amplitude and resultant intensity due to diffraction or diffraction from a single slit now 
this was the slit right of certain width say d and we had placed a convex lens here because we are dealing with Fraunhofer diffraction this is a ray of light that gets bent and this is another ray of light and they meet at certain point recall this diagram right suppose the phase difference between the two is delta now we are going to elaborate this diagram on the next page but before that i want to tell you that since we are trying to compare those light rays which come from the different parts of the same wavefront in case of single cell diffraction experiment i am again repeating that we do not have two sources of light but the light waves are actually coming from different parts of the same wavefront and they are superimposing to give us some pattern right now in the next diagram we shall do that in detail so imagine this is the slit of width d right its width is d and this is the wavefront so every point on the wavefront is a source of fresh disturbance and interference is taking place because of the light rays that are getting emitted from different parts of the same wavefront right now as shown in the diagram here let us first calculate what is the phase difference between the two and for that we shall draw a ray in this manner in this manner and suppose this angle is delta delta is the phase difference of the two waves that are getting emitted from a and b right now this wave front must be a part of some bigger circle right let's try to find that circle suppose this is the center and from here we hit a perpendicular we hit another perpendicular this is of radius r and this is also of radius r right now if delta is this angle this angle obviously has to be 180 minus delta since we say that this angle is 90 and this is also 90 what is the total sum of the four angles in a quadrilateral that is 360 so this is 90 plus 90 180 already that means the sum of this and this angle has to be 180 out of which this is already 180 minus delta right so this has to be delta this angle will be delta now from here we draw a perpendicular which divides this AB region equally into two parts AO and OB. So AO is equal to OB and obviously it also divides the angle this will be delta by 2. Right? So suppose there are n fresh disturbances on the on the wavefront and a is the amplitude of each amplitude of each so what is the total amplitude a is the amplitude there are n number of disturbances on this wave front we are choosing that there are some n number of fresh wavelets fresh disturbances n number and the amplitude of each is a so what is total amplitude that is a naught and that is n a we can also say that length of arc a b actually is this n a but we also know that length of arc is equal to radius into the angle l is equal to r theta so what what is l it is n a what is r it is r itself and what is theta it is this entire delta so from here you can find that r is equal to n a by delta now this is one of the equations the next equation is that you can choose a point p here for example so from this triangle b o p what do you get from triangle b o p what is sine delta by 2 sine delta by 2 is how much 
perpendicular is how much OB and hypotenuse is how much R. So OB by R. From here you get OB is equal to R sine delta by 2. Therefore, what is this AB? This AB is twice of this OB, right? So it is twice of OB. And what is that? You have already found OB, that is R sine delta by 2. So this is twice R sine delta by 2. For this R, you will substitute from this equation. And you get, what do you get? So you get, this is equal to, twice for R, you are going to substitute Na by delta sine of delta by 2. So if you rearrange it, it is basically sine of delta by 2 by delta by 2. So Na only. For Na, we have already written that this is the amplitude, total amplitude A0. So it is A0 times sine of delta by 2 by delta by 2. So this is the resultant amplitude. Resultant amplitude. And further, for this delta by 2, if you write, if you put this delta by 2 equal to some alpha for the sake of simplicity, then the resultant amplitude is how much? A naught times sine of alpha by alpha. Right? Similarly, the intensity will be given by the square of this. So, intensity will be A naught square sine square alpha by alpha square. Now, the question is why did we proceed in this manner? Which law and which geometry did we use in this, in doing all this? So, we said that this slit AB, from where we have a wave front, and we said that every point on the wave front is a fresh source of disturbance. And it is basically the rays, the disturbances that travel from this wave front, which superimpose to give us the interference pattern due to diffraction, right? Therefore, we have basically used polygon law of vectors that these disturbances sum up and this is the resultant. AB is the resultant. So, we have actually found this AB, right? So, this is how we find the resultant amplitude and resultant intensity, right? So, I think that clears it. So, this was the, these were the different disturbances and this AB was the resultant. We have basically used the polygon law of vectors. So, I hope that gives you a fair idea of intensity distribution pattern due to diffraction from a single slit.